I, I, I will just in this fine. Okay, this. I will look there. Do you, do you still need this for advice? No, okay. Because maybe, yeah, but can you put it away? This one? This is uh, a second English. Ah, okay. Because maybe I'm, I hope I'm not. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you want, you can see this. this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Also muss sprechen auch wichtig, damit man nicht so schnalzt, nicht so macht beim Sprechen. Also. Mhm. Also concentrate. Nein, danke.
herzlich willkommen. Welcome to the city of Vienna. We are sitting here in the Kunsthistorisches Museum at the famous Ringstraße. The museum was built in 1867 by the Imperial family of Austria. It is one of the most famous buildings in Vienna and it has one of the most famous collections from European art, Egyptian antiquities and marvels all over the world. We are sitting in the lounge of the Society of Friends and behind us you can see the cupola which has a restaurant and a piano bar and our visitors right now enjoying the evening with the exhibitions and some good food. My name is Claudia Augustat. I'm the curator for South America collections at the Weltmuseum Wien, which is right on the other side of the street. Maybe you wonder why I'm introducing the Kunsthistorisches Museum here. But since 16 years, we are building together a museum association. The Weltmuseum Wien was just reopened last October. And in the last years, we made a lot of efforts and working together with contemporary artists. Their perspectives is very important for us, and we produce together exhibition and performances. Also here in the Kunsthistorisches Museum, which you think is maybe a more classical um, event location, we are also start working with contemporary artists, and sometimes we are inviting artists, writers, or even directors to create exhibitions. On the 5th of November, we will open an exhibition created by the American director Wes Anderson and his wife, Human Malouf. This will be an exciting point in our calendar. The work with contemporary artists is very important for us, but unfortunately, because of the growing borders all over the world, a lot of these artists are not able to come to Vienna and work directly here with us and our collections. So we believe that the internet is a very important space to make, to build bridges and connecting people all over the world. And now I'm giving the word and the microphone to Renate. And as unfortunately I have to leave, I wish you a really pleasant evening, a very interesting conference. And I hope that one day I will see you here in Vienna. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia, for the very warm welcome. Have a nice evening. So, ¿qué tal? Y hola. And now my Spanish is at the end. I'm very happy to join you, um, to have the chance to join you tonight. And first of all, I also will thank the Kunsthistorische Museum Wien, Peter Gregort, and Bruno Castro Guerreras for the technical support. And that we have the opportunity to, to be in this absolutely fantastic scenery. I think Delma and I feel like princesses. It's very nice here. My name is Renate Kreil, and I'm working on behalf of ACUNET, the Austrian Scientific uh, National uh, Research Network. Uh, the so-called NREN for science, research, education, and culture. ACUNET, the Austrian NREN, um, is one of the few uh, where art and culture is a main topic on the agenda. We think this is very important, and of course, the Austrian scene is, art scene is very diverse. The infrastructure of culture, culture institutions very tight, and so we try to work together. And we already work with many uh, institutions like the Kunsthistorische Museum. They are our participants. Our participants uh, not only benefit from the technical in infrastructure we support, they're also, as well, very important partners for community services. For example, that's one of the examples why we can be here today because we have a very good relationship to cooperate. Um, I, I want to introduce you shortly in our activities in the field of art and culture. 
uh, one practical example, uh, we have four meetings yearly, the, the so-called Cook It Roundtable. We try to connect IT people from all the institutions, art and culture institutions in Austria to meetings two, three times a year and uh, discuss different topics, lo long-term uh, achieving, for example, or video streaming, whatever. Uh, that for us, it's very important to share knowledge and experience to help each other to avoid mistakes or perhaps leave very high costs because of mis uh, yeah, mismanagement. So we are really a small group of people who are trying to support each other. Um, for example, also because of the Cook It round tables, we have we, we, we have create, created a really wonderful infrastructure project uh, with um, we created, we built up, uh, okay, sorry, just a second. We created uh, a fiber ring between big uh, cultural institutions to connect them in, also in case of uh, safety. For example, the Kunsthistorische Museum, the Naturhistorische Museum, the Museumsquartier Wien, the University of uh, performing arts and music, as well the big castle Schönbrunn. And I want to say a funny story, because last week, uh, a kind of caterpillar damaged the cable in Schönbrunn. And with, without the ring and this connection with the other museums, they really would have a big problem. Um, on the other hand, one, our, one of our most important projects is uh, performing arts over advanced networks. We, and on our website, we say net art near the distance because the title is very long. Uh, it would be a pleasure if you go to our website, which is net art CC or net art AT. Uh, I really try to interest you and feedback is very welcome. What is performing arts over advanced networks? We try to create performances under the title Near in the Distance. It's a, a production series. We, last year we did the third one. We connect musicians, dancers uh, who are on remote places and connect them to one performance within milliseconds. We can do that because of the high speed networks of the national research networks and because of um, special low latency technologies like so-called LOLA and UltraGrid, uh, this is possible through this technology. And again, I really invite you to be interested uh, in these technologies. And as Claudia before mentioned, it's very, very, very important to overcome borders more and more. And we see the internet itself as an art space and we are defended to produce art, to make it make productions like um, near and the distance realistic. And the more you join the community, the easier it will become to finance it. So please ask your national research networks to cooperate and uh, give art and culture really a, a space on the agenda. Performing Art World Advanced Networks finally is also why Delva and I we met in uh, in April at the Network Perform Performing Arts Production meeting in Miami, uh, where I was invited to make a lecture about our productions, and so it was a pleasure to meet Delma, and because of that we made a cooperation last week together at the Ars Electronica Festival in Linz. And today we cooperate for the Mura conference. And I deeply hope that uh, we can work together as well in the future. I thank you very much. And now I will give the microphone to Delma and wish you. And thank you. See, sí, mientras. 
eh, hacen los cambios técnicos de la sala eh, in English to Spanish. Uh, just only I want to, to show you the space that Claudia Augusta mentioned where we are. In the first place, as we, we met in Miami in the network for the performing arts that reunites the Europe and the United States. And it's a pleasure to present the contents that we've been developing in Latin America. So we hope that these activities will be one of many that we are planning with Renate and the museum here in Vienna. And it's an honor to be here and to present MURE, which is a collaborative effort. In that sense, I would like to start showing you the presentation. Which shows some of the main results of MURE 2017. Within this community characteristics, we make this presentation. It is the effort of many, a collaborative effort, an effort of cooperation through <clears throat> advanced networks through the internet. MURE was created in the cultural ring for Europe and Latin America, where I work as a director. It gener generated much interest at the national and global level. In May of 2017, it was financed by the Ministry of Culture and Education, and thanks to the support of many institutions, national and international, mainly the academic networks for research and innovation, As a matter of fact, now we are um, doing this conference through the network in Mexico with interpreters in English, Portuguese, and Spanish, which shows some of the collaborative work. And we are also working through a series of networks, like, for example, the ones in Brazil, Chile, Colombia. And we also have the support of Red Clara, which is a Latin American network for advanced networks. So you are looking at the beginning of the presentation. We're moving to the next slide. The second, the third. So it's important for us to be here in this museum. We can wonder as a case study. For Mure, 
regarding innovation, investigation, collaboration. We're looking at this from that perspective. In the next slide, we can see precisely what MURE is. You can see it in Spanish and in English. So you can move between the two slides in English and Spanish so the audience can see what it is. MURE is a circuit, uh, an exhibition circuit on the internet with na narratives around patrimonial objects, generating dialogues and interactions in real time through advanced networks of internet. The museums, cultural centers, institutions, and people who participate do not coexist geographically, but they do inhabit the same virtual space and time together. It was a way of, of inhabiting that network differently in that that place called Mure, which is called the Museography Network. Stories are built as well as narratives between objects and people in local and global terms. Now that you know what Mure is, we are going to the specific objectives which were approved by the Ministry of Culture and Education in Uruguay and by the, the Fund for Cultural Projects. The general objective for MURE is precisely to generate symbolic productions by artists, museums, and also the audiences, as audiences like the ones that are watching us right now through the advanced uh, internet networks. That's the general uh, objective. The specific objectives were four. Firstly, to organize an interactive exhibition circuit through visual arts contents, creation, and productions through the advanced internet. So the first thing was to organize that circuit. Then to design interactive scripts and stories in the format of online transmissions like we are doing right now, uh, which allow to incorporate several creations in visual arts of different kinds. So within the arts, we're talking about visual arts, but in the different examples you're going to see soon, that is actually a very broad vision of art and contemporary art, as Renate was mentioning uh, earlier. The third specific objective was to integrate and correlate diverse museums, uh, exhibition spaces, and heritage sites in local and global terms. So for us, the local aspect is Uruguay and its different spaces which participated, and global is uh, other countries or other regions which also participated. And the fourth objective was far more specific, and it involved the target audience in Uruguay. This objective, uh, was the inclusion of audiences of young Uruguayans who participated and could also co-create contents. So this is an interactive aspect and a proactive attitude through this network of contents, which allows a production surrounding the visual arts. Within that target audience, we found including and co-creating as a part of the strategy of MURE. Well, uh, we saw the target, the objectives in Spanish and English. Now, what uh, did we learn within the specific objectives? The first, third target, there were seven online sessions these sessions were pre-designed regarding the general matters to deal with. We had 
add Moodle 1.2, Moodle 1.3, 1.4, until number 1.7, where we had the contents of 1.1 from 1.5 were preset. The contents, uh, we have been defining it a bit better, so you can see what it's about. It's a proposition that we had to make to the audience and different artists were producing content. But the last two productions were open and through different methods with the audience and interactions, we were receiving interest and in the ways in which audience wanted to participate, co-create and generate content for the network. Now we're going to talk about how we arrived to those contents through a online interaction from the audience. These images you are seeing right now explain some of the technical aspects regarding the connectivity and stakeholder map of main Muir institution services. You can see the link between Europe, Latin America, uh, practically all Latin America, and the main vortex was in Uruguay, in Uruguay regarding the interaction of people. On those vortex, we had the participation of several institutions, in some cases the Valencia University, Bologna University. Uh, there was the management of different contents from universities from all over the world, Colombia. We had the presence of Lorenzo. Uh, we'll talk a bit in more detail later and through the interactions on the network and research networks, the invitations were for the people who participated were generated. And on the next slide, you can see a bit the organizational chart. We have the Mure team that could be financed through contest funds. We had visual communication for Mure, interpreters that now we're going to dedicate some time for them, and technicians. The technicians and the whole Mure team communicated by using the academic networks that you can see there, Curi in Mexico, Nat in Colombia, Rao in Uruguay, and Reuna in Chile. RMP, which is Brazilian, participated especially with content, not to the work group, but yes, with content, uh, very high quality content. The communication between these two phases, we have the research group or research community of Moria between Europe and Latin America. It's a group of colleagues that were giving a specialized view and at the same time interacting with their own populations. Mure, besides the uh, fund, which is a project of art, it has a project regarding education. We are going to focus in cultural interve intervention, which took place last year through the funds. But it has different profiles, the project the target audience in Uruguay that you can see it over there in those slides in Spanish as well as in English. Have the students in Uruguay in, in, art, in artists and assistance from info centers of UC network. It's a network that it's integrated by different institutions from Antel, that's the main telephone company in Uruguay and different organizations that promote the Society of Knowledge, Society of Information. At the same time, other participants, not targets, but 
they did participate and they participated with research where the members of different institutions of Latin America and Europe, uh, Europe that we're going to mention in a moment. Together with this, we had the sessions and uh, co-created projects that were the final products, some of the final products that were a result of the project. OK, so who participated in the region? Well, in the two continents, America and Europe, it's important to mention that at the beginning, the project had a global and local perspective after the project was financed we had an increase of 10 times the number of participants so we needed the infrastructure to this for this project to develop uh, in the map here you see participants from United States, in the, from the University of Harvard, from Mexico, Ecuador, Peru, Paraguay, Chile, Argentina. So we're talking about people and artists who, who participated and also created content and in Europe we have participants from Switzerland and Italy and Spain so we can talk about America and Europe the participant audience in Uruguay which was a more a specific audience here we can see the different places where the project took place And although in our proposal we had different provinces that we had selected, the interest in this project gave place to the project uh, to extend throughout the country. We had some teacher training institutions, the institutions of the UCI network, Teacher training institutions are the red ones, and the UCI networks are the blue ones. Then there are other institutions, like the orange ones are museums or heritage institutions, and schools and high schools. With um, a target aimed at children. So here you can see all the institutions, and you can see the importance of this project on a national scale. Our target audience, as one of our specific objectives, were the students of uh, teacher training. We're talking about 103 students in different groups, which generated projects within the Mure, and they also generated theoretical proposals, and through those works, we could find the symbolic productions, which were one of the main objectives. I would like to present my colleagues, the researchers community. In the central part of the image, you can see in this slide the community of researchers of Mure. Are we seeing this image? Thanks. In the center, you see the areas 
of these uh, specialists, and I include myself, is social sciences, ancestral cultures, museography, teacher education. Well, here we, you can see our colleagues. Agapito Chukasha, Salamanca Cusco, Alejandro Mendoza, between Alicante and in Spain, and Hidalgo in Mexico, Amparo Alonso, Ricardo Huerta from the University of Valencia, Norberto Díaz from Colombia, Paula Parada from Chile, Federico Brum from the University of the Republic, and myself, Delma Rodriguez. It was it was very interesting from the beginning of the of the project to build up this community and given the interest in our proposal we made a international gathering and we had a lot to talk about in that sense in the next slide you will see another graph which shows how the online sessions work and each uh, and the flyers for each uh, session and the products that uh, generated from these which were co-created now you are in the next slide which is in Spanish and in English so we can go back and forth between them but the question was how th was the atmosphere and the graph from Mude 1.3 shows a very We, we had dancers from uh, Mexico and the um, um, cultural ancestors were discussed. We had primary schools which participated as external audience, university and secondary school students, artists, artists which were which based their production on ancestral culture and this was a very fertile atmosphere for participation both regarding the participants and the participation next slide please we can see an image from the first session Mure 1.1 Global conscience, which which means global and local, which was a very interesting experience, uh, as you can see in the in the first image to the left, we had artist Brian McKern, an art a new media artist. He provided us with. Uh, a mini concert and we also had the presence of Mamo Lorenzo who is a spiritual leader from Colombia who talked about what a community implies and the link between the global and the local We also had Laura Paravecino showing her artwork, um, Astrolab project, and all these, uh, they were all in real time. 
We also had Veronica Marquez with an interaction between photograph and identity. Each one of these sessions had its program with an educational part and uh, which allowed interaction with these contents. You can see this refers to MODE 1.2. Those signs of hate and violence that we encounter, we ever, uh, we all encounter in some point in our lives, and how to manage these sim symbols and signs in a positive way and a learning way. That's uh, the title of this presentation. is linked to the feelings through the new media. An artist that is also uh, in international and in uh, level is Clemente Padin. In Montevideo gave a presentation, Marila Sheregui, showing her interactive uh, uh, work from the University of Valencia and a video performance about fears developed by uh, the artist Gonzalo Bifarela. Uh, the public was able to uh, participate in this uh, and right now there is no interaction but back then there, it was uh, possible to interact uh, and the public was able to interact as well. That implied the generation of a, a line of this proposal uh, at a content level as well. The next slide you can see is about MUDE 1.4, the art machines. It was a very interesting experience because all the activity was centered in a small uh, town in San Gregorio, San Gregorio de Polanco, in the middle of Uruguay. A small town with a particular characteristics because it promotes uh, art in, the, in this, this town. It's characteristic, uh, this generation of um, street art and this town participated, uh, Dorit Chrysler uh, participated, she's a very uh, known Austrian producer. Also tango was involved, not only tango and art, but also to promote tango as a dance that promotes uh, that uh, produces a hug, an embrace, and this concept uh, was focused to create a link with the other person to show this town, and the art of this town was one of the aims. Was also present Cacho La Bandera, that is a very uh, famous uh, artist from San Gregorio as well. We were very lucky, lucky to have him there. the association of San Gregorio that, uh, and the um, middle school that uh, participated as well. The community also participated and we could see the sense of, the, of art uh, through uh, group interaction. In the next slide, you're going to see the next um, in Nure 1.5, the travelers. That was um, to show uh, the experiences of the travelers as a strategies with migrant audiences. We see little kids, the image of uh, a school on the top right corner. It's a, a 
immigrant public and one of the children could uh, tell her experience of uh, traveling between Peru and Uruguay. And uh, she, we also had the participation of John Huth about how to handle with uh, traditional methods of location. That's what we, uh, that what uh, travelers need, uh, not only having a, a, a device, a location device. We can, we can see the, those knowledge, uh, those um, experiences that we can gather beyond the technological. Uh, Museum Anglo also participated. That was its World Industrial Heritage Site of UNESCO in Fraivento City, in Uruguay. This is a, a city near uh, the Uruguay River. It's very beautiful. And they were telling us about the, the visions and the experiences of the migrants uh, in Uruguay through uh, industrial heritage. A very interesting participation was um, the um, the cemetery of the cemeteries of, of Uruguay. Um, in the next slide, sessions five and six, six and seven, it was focused on the, the development of the previous uh, sessions uh, with the students and future uh, teachers of Uruguay, and they were creating projects and that were to be presented uh, in Mure of different. Uh, it was a focus on body painting, sound, uh, murals, visual arts, and it was. There was a wide spectrum of possibilities. There was also a project included. Uh, the Colombia, the Colombian heritage. The next session was called the Muses of Mure. We are here in a temple of muses because the word museum refers to the temple of the muses, and that we we thought that that was a way of generating museums and the appropriation of contents. This museum in which we are now is uh, one of the most uh, classical museum styles. But through internet, we can create other spaces which are considered within museography. What happened in that session? Well, a little bit of everything. But one of the most interesting things had to do with the activities of the cosmic piano. We will show a video right now, please. Thank you.
can you hear me? I am here. Can you hear me? I don't know if you could appreciate the video. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. So we can go to the next slide. So, <clears throat> next slide, we have some of the um, testimonials from Mure, from our main, the main roles in these academic networks, and one of these roles were f fulfilled by our colleagues from the Mexican academic network, uh, the Colombian network, the Chilean network. And you have here some of the testimonials about the project which helped to consolidate other ways of understanding how collaboration works. These networks also help to connect different physical places, like Enrique Cordoba said, Eduardo Romero said this was a, a training, and now Curi will have uh, an exhibition about different connected nodes Beatriz Contreras from Chile said that the collaboration between the team was very positive because from besides the work in design, it was a good development in the teamwork. And if we go to the next slide, Okay, I would like to mention this part, especially because it represents a growth in the collaboration and it regards simultaneous interpretation, which was provided through a process which is shown in this in this graph which started in 2015 and in 2016 we added Portuguese to English and other nodes were included and in, two, in 2017 we had seven sessions and in those sessions we could work in the way you see there. And I think this shows the importance of the contents of Mure to other regions, not only uh, Latin America. So if we go to the next step of the same slide, can we go to the next step in the slide? You can see there a text from Federico Brum, who coordinates the interpreters. Actually, the interpreters are translation students and they are doing the simultaneous interpreting to English and to Portuguese 
and this allows the development of the it has allowed to add other uh, curricular elements for the translation students and it has also allowed Anisha Cultural to grow but this also helps for the translation students curricula so we see that the collaboration go both ways and they allow an expansion beyond what we are used to understand as collaboration I would like to invite you to watch the video from Federico Brum where he shares about this aspect hello everyone my name is Federico Brum I'm a translator and interpreter I coordinate the translation courses at Universidad de la República and we had we have worked with Anisha Cultural from 2015 until today what we do at the university by means of uh, a collaboration with Anisha Cultural they require conference interpreters and our students need real life scenarios so this benefits us both in 2015 we had two conferences of a cultural ring which streamed to different centers connected to the cultural ring in 2016 we had more sessions we worked with uh, the particle acceleration from Geneva and last year's last activity we also streamed to all the connected centers in class we prepare the conferences we rehearse with uh, real equipment and then we work with real audiences in the cultural ring. In 2016, we have a lot. In 2017, sorry, we have, we had more than 50 speakers. We have worked in uh, four this year. We still have three more to go. And this is a great opportunity to work in real life scenarios for our students and so they can practice before they get their degree. This experience with the Cultural Ring has been really helpful and we hope to continue working with them. Thanks. Thank you, Federico. For this, we continue with the presentation. The next slide, please. Good. Mira has finished the project. And uh, had a different uh, online resources. You can see here part of the open repository on its web, Anisha Cultural. Uruguay.net slash more and there you can see different resources the repository has uh, the um, edited session videos that you can see in our channel you can see the online uh, sessions and also the edited uh, sessions uh, as educational material it includes uh, the Murad book, and it's also 
used for educators to find uh, content on those sessions to work with their students. We work with a um, license of uh, Creative License Commons and the symbol of Muret. You can see and you can download it from the internet and edit it and print it into 3D and generate other symbols as well. Beside these products, Muret produces a specific repository, which is an open resource of this project. If we uh, see the next slide, please. Some of the evaluations of Muria are linked to the coordinator, the coordinators, to see the uh, participation of, of people. We're not uh, talking about viewers through uh, streaming. We're uh, talking about people in uh, rooms that are connected, about 1,400 uh, people in Latin America and Europe, and views are around 5,000. That is a different count of the real participation of people. So they could see f through streaming and also those who were not uh, on stream but were uh, participating in the Mura part uh, projects and th those were counted as personal uh, participants. From the 25 coordinators, we have 13 answers. That was a very long evaluation. We can see the in the previous one, we can see the the evaluations were about the the, pro, the project considered uh, as very good and excellent in general terms. It was not. There was not a bad or regular, but blue is excellent and uh, red is very good in technical and in general, but also in contact aspects, if the contents were interesting or not, 70% were considered excellent contents. The rest, very good. The technical and support tests from the people that had no reference uh, around this. They were being educated how, uh, on how to communicate and connect. And the next slide of some of these evaluations are showing us for example about the PDF program that we were giving them previous to the session. This This part that is uh, on blue, the, that they used it, a part that uh, they didn't, and uh, the other part that were partially using it. The, the book was a compilation for the end of the project, and this is what we're um, thinking about the contents post-project. If you are interested uh, in participating on other uh, MURE projects, that is very Im important for us. We have a permanent interest, and they are asking when when a Mure um, session is going to happen. And and now, right now, we're just presenting the results. And now, if we follow the script, it would be very interesting the participation of. Uh, the participants in, in Mexico, the Mexican network had a very particular part participation. 
Now we are in an interactive network from uh, Mexico, in fact, and they have developed a series of innovation, innovations in a technical level, and now I would like them to co uh, comment on this. Please, go ahead. Thank you, Delma. About what is being uh, on the presentation, Miria was a very interesting um, opportunity to participate. Um, besides participating in, with different cultures and technologies in different countries, all this we did always through video conference. In this process, the problematics were identified, but also uh, being solved. And we did it all together. This shows the importance of working and collaborate with uh, not only technological networks, but also human networks. Mira allowed us, as scientists and researchers and teachers and students, be able to collaborate and share information and tools, all this through uh, connections, networks, with a video conference video conferences. This, as a consequence, generated a place where we could coexist with different members of uh, academic uh, members and scientists. Uh, I don't know if you can see the presentation, but, but if you want, I can continue. Through the advanced networks, the participants were able to participate. We're, we're seeing you, Marta. We cannot see the presentation. We see you. OK. Through connectivities, the participants were able to interact. Distances and, and uh, frontiers were not um, an obstacle, and we were able to share the, the members of different institutions in different countries and different continents. Connectivity between countries and institutions and people has uh, two objectives. The first is to support the work uh, of academic infrastructures, and the second is to be, become a very important tool of, of research, providing a platform on which the researchers can develop and also try new services and technologies in networks. Now Eduardo Romero is going to talk. He's uh, the responsible of video conference in CUDI, and he's going to talk about uh, the connections that were made. Hello. I coordinate, among other things, the video conference system. When we were asked uh, to provide this service, we had some concerns related to the connections because they were from Latin America, from South America, so we were concerned that there, there may be some issues to reach the servers. Our servers are located in different universities. Right now, there is one in the University of Veracruz, in the University of Puebla, and in the National University of Mexico. We also have a, uh, another server in the south of the city here. And based on this concern, we established two methods of connection to 
the University of Mexico and the University of Puebla. In the University of Mexico, we have a connection through advanced internet and commercial internet. On the other hand, in Puebla, we only have a connection through commercial internet. This aiming to distribute the connections depending on the, the, the status of the institutions which are connected. Many do join us through the advanced internet and the academic networks, and for others it was uh, necessary to use the commercial internet. This is a word cloud of the different participations uh, were through video conference. As we can see, most of them are universities and uh, secondary education institutions. They were connected from Colombia, or their institutions were more geared towards technology. In terms of CUDI and what this means, we've explored new ways to display content, not just the, the usual ones, but multi-angle for the sessions. We've had a presence or participation with some devices for video conferences, which send images in very high definition. We've used some professional sound equipment, but we've also had connections through mobile phones with a microphone included in those, in those mobile phones or with uh, external microphones that we connected or some laptop computers that have been linked to mobile cameras or professional cameras as well. And this has, has been a challenge uh, to show those images. Another challenge that we've faced uh, is the number of users. Switching the cameras or changing the position of the cameras and the microphones, but fortunately we've, we've overcome these obstacles. Also regarding audio with the interpreters, which has been, it has been a, a, a very warm uh, way of teaming up with the University of the Republic in Uruguay, and that has been my experience. Thank you very much, Eduardo. Truly the, the work of CUDI, which can be summarized in few words implied many hours of rehearsals, of testing the networks from uh, different devices. You saw over 60 nodes connected. That's a lot when it comes to video conferences, sharing content, video, audio. Truly, it was incredible. And with this, I want to thank especially the whole team uh, from CUDI and, of course, the academic networks, especially uh, the one from Uruguay, which specialized uh, in, in part of this, which is simultaneous interpreting, as we are having right now in three channels, English, Spanish, and Portuguese. I would like now, I'm not sure if we can return to the presentation and finish with the final two slides in that presentation. The background here is marvelous, but let's go back to the presentation. Without a doubt, it's a big thank you for everyone. This thank you you can see in several languages. It represents the different languages and cultures and regions which participated in MURE through a different uh, proposal to understand museography. So thank you very, very much to everyone. Before finishing, I would like to tell you a bit of who made this content session possible. But 
a big thank you truly to everyone and being here is a way of representing the very interesting job that has been done as a team in cooperation and collaboration. If we continue with the presentation, we can go maybe to a Q&A uh, session. You have the two uh, website URLs for Anisha Cultural or the Cultural Ring and also the website for MURE so you can see the projects that we are working on but from now we could have a bit of an exchange and we have some colleagues which are online for example Agapito Chukasha I am seeing also the colleagues from Colombia who are online <coughs> and while we see some videos I think we have a video of by one of the interpreters uh, from Portuguese. So I also want to thank the coordination of Portuguese by Alejandra Faverio, who has been working along with Federico, uh, the coordinator, the general coordinator of interpreting. Maybe we can see one of these videos and then move on to the participation of Agapito and Diana as colleagues who are a part of this activity. Please go on. My name is Edison Texeira, professor of language and literature, Spanish and Portuguese, and I am also a linguist. I've been working professionally for almost two decades, and I also work as a translator and interpreter in conferences. I want to thank Delma Rodriguez for the invitation. Uh, she has been uh, carrying out a significant coordination and administration also as part of the Anisha Cultural. I think that the collaboration as an interpreter is another way to represent what Anisha Cultural does to share contents with the region and the world. My experiences in interpreting from the College of from the School of Engineering and the School of Law in the University of the Republic allow me to get closer to the processes of exchange and creation in the cultural space in this project. Aside from getting to know the potential of the networks on the internet and audiovisual production, I think that the cooperation that can be achieved between different professionals also allows for the development of other uh, more unusual competences that we can see in standard conferences. I also value the fact that through the work in teams and different people uh, from different areas and disciplines, we get an access to cultural contents in Spanish, English, and Portuguese, and that all of these can expand in different ways, more and more every time. Here we have the testimonial videos. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Alexandro Mendoza. I'm Mexican and work in Spain in the University of. I've been invited as an external observer in the Museology Progress eh, Museum due to the link I've had with Anisha Cultural in Latin America and Europa that I was able to know from the Internet Development Agency in Mexico. I participated in several committees in Commission Art 
digital libraries I was the coordinator of app development and at the last minute I was a part of secretary of the management council of CUDI. I also added my artistic experience to this. We work in projects like the book published on the 100 Mexican artists in Europe, which was a push forward by the Barcelona Note. This experience allowed me to have an opinion on what I believe is a part of the project experience of online museography. I think it's a very innovative project from the technological perspective as well as from the cultural perspective. Uh, we can highlight three important aspects in that one, uh, which I would mention. Uh, first, which I will mention is the technic technical logistics for the network management. Second, the visibility that has given to different regions and areas that are part of the network. And third, that it is a formative instrument. It's a educational instrument that allows its participants to get familiar with the technology as well as getting to know new methodology for artistic production and diffusion of culture. and we are reaching cultural integration through this network. We can highlight that thanks to this, without these projects, these instances uh, wouldn't work on traditional methods or on conventional methods, uh, being there personally or working using uh, classical methods. It's very important, it will have a very big closure and it's not only oriented to the consumption of content but to the production and participation of the collaborators. Hello, I'm Francia Pires, a student of teaching visual communication in Artigas and I have participated in almost every conference. My experience in, on this project, uh, I would like to cite Pablo Freire, a Brazilian pedagogist. No one educates himself, people educate each other. I think this quote is perfect to show how Mure allowed us to acquire different knowledges through exchanges, with different rooms and different artists integrated with integrating with different countries so we can acquire knowledge on their culture on their traditions different cultural centers that turned up locally and internationally hi i'm luciana lopez visual communication students of the second year of in Montevideo regarding Mure, I was very glad to participate in those. They allowed me to get to know different artists of different disciplines in real time. These instances allowed me to create a project, a group project that we named uh, Identity that allowed us to participate in different instances of Mure. We participated in Mure 1.6 and this exhibitions we were able to expose the work we did. I am Maria Rodriguez. I study teaching of visual communications in Montevideo. I got to know through image theory uh, the Mori project. I think it's a very valuable proposition in not only cultural but at an educational level we were able to share with different countries of latin america and europe making exchanges with artists cultures cultural centers and research centers we were able to start a project that 
helped us grow a lot, not only individually, but in a group level. I think it was very important, not only because of the results, but to uh, co-create online. Hi, I'm Navira Galvan. I study visual communication. I'm a student second year in Montevideo. I think the project uh, Museo Museography Network has grown and got better uh, regarding its connectivity and the development of content throughout each conference. I am in the group embodied embodied ID. We got to discover that we can co-create regardless of the place where you are at. My name is Virginia Alvarez. I'm a second year student of visual communications in Montevideo. I have participated in every mure and I have learned something from each one. This new method of museography has helped me a lot. I'm part of Embodied Identity that presented a project in Mure 1.6 and will follow on on Mure 1.7. Working in a group has made me grow and I have discovered that we can co-create with other people. I saw a project that our project can grow along with other projects that participated. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. What you can see now is a video. Is there working a mural, a collective mural? between the University of Valencia and the students in Uruguay. They incorporated the different places in Peru and Mexico. They were generating content. So I found really interesting to show this video. That was one of the many activities that they made in Valencia. And we have Agapito online. I don't know if you can enable audio and video. Hi, yes. Pleasure to see you. Can you hear me? Hi. I'm gonna say hello to you in in my language. This means how are you? Are you okay? I just want to tell the team that has made this possible. Uh, we have been participating along with different education institutions from Peru that belongs to a rural community. And at the same time, we have been participating with institutes. We have tried to do this participation from here, from Spain, University of Salamanca. And it has been a very enriching experience for everyone to participate and at the same time to get information and to send information that allows to present ourselves. I think this interaction allows to create a more global world and for everyone. I just wanted to thank from our educational institution that is uh, Cochacunca and the Teachers Association of Chicagnian from Cusco. 
and here with the help of of the teams of the University of Calamanca. Now I'm talking to you from Salamanca, Spain. Thank you, Agapito. You also did an excellent job coordinating from Spain with your community, with your Quechua communities in Peru. An incredible effort. You integrated communities of children and adults, uh, in particular uh, Tic ancestors, and it was very enriching because the date of that coincided with the Festival de Semilla, the seed festival. What I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. The Quechua community were waiting for that uh, activity. They want especially to connect, to share their heritage of seeds with us online. And that generated a very significant uh, moment and experience for us. So thank you very much to all of you, and especially to Ruben, Leoncio, and all the teachers who participated. Thank you, Agapito, for participating today. OK, thank you. And it will be very uh, valuable to listen to everyone else and to hear you tell the experience. And let's keep moving forward. We'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Agapito. We're now going to welcome Liliana Takaso from the University Antonio Nariño. Liliana is going to tell us about her participation, and I'm sure she has uh, a list of things that she wants to talk about. But it was one of the co created projects. So please, Liliana, tell us. Thank you for coming in from Colombia and tell us about it. We can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you, Delma. I want to talk about four little things uh, regarding the whole Mure project. I want to highlight that it gave us an opportunity to connect and interact to give support to research research about heritage, cultural heritage, among other things. A second point is that I want to thank them because they offered new ways to explore territorial contexts, real and virtual. And also it allowed us to explore the artistic ex production and the aesthetics that take place in very distant places from us, as well as uh, other places which are nearer. This project made the possibilities within cooperation more visible, and this is important for me, and it's an important motivation to make artistic production and academic production more available uh, to everyone. I want to highlight that and I wanted to give a very special thank you to the technical team of MURE and especially thank you Delma. Uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you, thank you Liliana. It was truly a pleasure to meet you. We haven't met prior to the project and she's one of the many colleagues who enriched this this project, Mure reunited a lot of people who hadn't met previously, and now we're all together. So is the case of uh, our colleague here, Renate, and we w should be finishing right now. We're going to get closer to the balcony uh, in order to say goodbye from here. And while we take our places here, I don't know if we can see you clearly, Renate. Okay, I will read and thank everyone who participated, especially for this activity. Particularly, I want to thank Renate's effort here in Austria because 
this implied the work from the people here coordinating uh, many activities and, and staff. And much of this was thanks to Renate. And I think that, that this, is, this is very promising for our future work together through the academic networks. Of course, I want to thank the museum, Claudia Gustat, and the representative Saconet who came here. And I will say everyone's names in order. And so this can show that this, these activities are not of one person alone, but of a big team. For this activity today, these are the names the names that I'm going to read. It's almost 20 names. We are uh, behind the scenes developing everything. I want to thank especially Cudi, Marta Ávila, Eduardo Romero, Enrique Córdoba. In Rao, I want to thank Daniel Diana, Marcelo Parada, Mario Guerri, Julio Cardoso, who worked a lot in all of the sessions of MURE, even though he's not uh, here today. Uh, Luis Castillo also, who has collaborated a lot with us, with the networks. Mirta Podesta, the director of RAU. The Colombian network called Renata. Over there, I want to thank Camilo Jaimes and Claudia Costa. Of course, I want to thank Red Clara, all the technicians, uh, all the staff from the network who has participated. The School of Law, coordinated by Federico Brum. From there, also Alejandra Perez Faberio and Fernando Gonzalez in the technical part. And especially, I want to thank the interpreter, whose names I'm going to read now in English, Rodrigo Machado, Romina Diaz, Gonzalo Perarta, and Rosana Fernandez. In Portuguese, Luciana Martinez, Matias Gonzalez, and Juan Alejandro Soto. Thank you very much to everyone. And from here, from the museum, we want to greet you. Renate is here also to, to say goodbye. And thank you for being here. Adios, buenas tardes a todos. We leave you with the, with the image from the balcony as the backdrop to, to finish today's session, so you can see the space where we are right now. Particularly today, it's now it's night. I'm not sure what time it is exactly in Vienna, but it's pretty late. It's 9 o'clock, and it's a special day in the museum night here in Vienna. Thank you very much and good night.